Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to give you a yogurt calorie guide for El Ruderi and El Gasserai yogurt. I want, to do, I want to say that these are really not typically yogurts because they don't use the strains that are normally found in yogurt. This is more of a fermented dairy that looks like a yogurt, but they're really not um, the types of yogurt strains that are in regular yogurts that you consume. So some people, technically, they wouldn't classify these as a yogurt in the technical terms, but that doesn't really matter because we do what we do and it works. So, um, and it looks like yogurt, tastes like yogurt, so we're going to call it yogurt. So let me talk to you about the yogurt nutritional counts because there's a lot of um, variations. There's a lot of things that people don't know about yogurt um, and the calorie counts that are, are even in the jars on the yogurts at the store. So yogurt is such a miracle food. It can be made with so many different types of milk and it can be made dairy or non-dairy. And each type of milk brings its own unique benefits and nutritional profile. So you can choose what works best for you. And in this case, El Ruderi has specific benefits and so does El Casserai. Different from the other milks that you get in this, other yogurts that you get in the store, they're going to offer you unique benefits. And fermented yogurt is more than just milk. It's an alchemy that transforms that milk into a powerful probiotic rich superfood. So when the bacteria and yeast and yogurt get to work, they break down the milk's carbohydrates and convert them to lactic acid, leaving it almost completely lactose free. Now, Lactic, lactic acid has a few calories. It's very minimal, but it does have some calories. And usually around a half a cup, it's 0.7 to 1% of the final product is lactic acid. But that all depends on how long you ferment it. So when you ferment this type of yogurt um, for 36 hours, because we're using the strains of El Ruderi and El Gasserai, you have to ferment it that long because if you don't, you're not going to get the high CFU or colony forming units um, of billions of bacteria if you don't get to that 36 hour mark. It really, El Ruderi only starts to make El Ruderi at hour 30. So it's really important that you ferment it for 36 hours so you get the high CFUs, all those probiotics that you want that will give you the health benefits. But because it's fermented, um, for 36 hours, almost all the lactose is gone, if not all of it. That's what makes it so sour and tart. And this makes it easier for those who are sensitive to lactose to enjoy. Um, and it also gives you lots and lots of probiotics. Fermentation not only preserves the milk, but it gives you more vitamins and minerals. And it also increases the nutritional counts. For instance, you'll get more B vitamins when milk is fermented. Um, often like when you make kefir, it puts vitamin C into the milk. Um, that wasn't there at, when you first made it because if it's pasteurized milk, the vitamin C is killed, but fermentation adds that back in. And it does this in yogurt too. It's like a little bit of a magic trick that boosts your digestion, strengthens your immune system, and gives you a wonderful surge of energy. These foods are really completely different foods from regular dairy because they're fermented. And fermented dairy is a completely different food than regular dairy. Now, the lactose is gone, the vitamins increase, um, you have probiotics in it. It's just, it's just a wonderful food uh, to consume on a daily basis. I think that fermentation is a gift to milk because milk can get a bad rep, especially when it's been pasteurized and homogenized, and you strip away many of the benefits because raw milk has a lot of vitamin C, a lot of B vitamins, but when, they're, when that is pasteurized, you lose a lot of that. And when it's homogenized, when the hom homogenization creates a uniform milk, and when it's non-homogenized as it comes in its raw state, then the cream rises to the top. And homogenization uh, takes that away and creates a uniform milk. But all that being said, when you ferment it, it transforms it into a something different, an entirely different food. It's healing, then nourishing, and has so many benefits that regular dairy does not. Fermentation is a gift that can turn ordinary foods into superfoods, and it's available to everybody. 
Um, if you embrace the microbes that make these foods and let them do their magic in the foods and then you consume it, they're going to do that inside of you as well. So it's a powerful way to nourish yourself. And it's kind of a gift that keeps on giving because when those microbes start to grow inside of you, they change your microflora, they increase good bacteria, they, inc they reduce inflammation, they boost your immune system, they help you digest your foods, um, they give you vitamins and nutrients that you normally wouldn't get. And it's just one of the amazing benefits of these yogurts is how easy that your body can not only digest these foods, but it will also help you to digest the food you eat with it. So it, it delivers the nutrients quickly to the cells because it's basically pre-digested. And then you get all those um, nutrients quickly to help you repair, growth, detoxify, whatever your body needs, um, these microbes will provide for them. Okay, so let me get into label confusion. So there is a lot of confusion about the carbohydrate count content listed on the packages of fermented foods. And it's easy to see why. The government requires food manufacturers to count carbohydrates by difference. What this means is they measure everything else like water, ash, fats, and proteins. And then they assume that whatever is left is a carbohydrate. This is the standard practice. But when it comes to fermented foods like yogurt and kefir and other uh, fermented foods, it doesn't tell the full story. So when we make these fermented foods, we're inoculating the milk with beneficial lactic acid bacteria. These microbes go to work consuming all of the milk sugars or lactose, whichever one you want to call it, and then they convert some of it into lactic acid. This lactic acid is what curdles the milk, giving that tangy taste we love and that curd. So while the label may still show carbohydrates as if the lactose is present, the reality is that these lactose-loving bacteria have gobbled up almost all of it. And the carbohydrates, carbohydrates listed are actually due to the presence of lactic acid, not lactose. Carbohydrates count drops significantly. So for instance, if you've noticed, if you ever looked at yogurt, it'll have about the same amount of milk sugars in there that is in um, regular milk, but they're gone and you, they can't really account for it because they don't know how long you fermented it. Every jar would be different. It would be very hard because of the way they measure things to really even get anywhere accurate on the, on the carbohydrate counts on fermented foods. So here's, here's what you can do with a cup of plain yogurt, kefir or buttermilk. Um, you only should count about one to four carbohydrates per cup. Uh, Dr. Jack Goldberg of the Go Diet even measured this in his own lab. Kefir, for instance, is 99% lactose-free because the bacteria consumes, consumes nearly all of the lactose, making it a great uh, you know, option for those who are lactose-free. And one of the reasons kefir is so efficient at it is because there's 50 plus good bacteria and yeast in it that consume all that lactose quite rapidly because there's just so many microbes. And if you ferment yogurt for seven to eight hours, so regular yogurt in the stores, it typically has around four grams of carbs per cup. Um, but when you extend that fermentation time to 36 hours using strains like lactobacilli ruteri and lactobacillus gasseri, the carbohydrate count drops significantly, much like kefir, because these bacteria work hard to consume any remaining lactose. So kefir and L. ruteri and gasseri have anywhere from one carb to zero carbohydrates, thankful, thankfully to the abundance of bacteria that breaks down the lactose completely. So let's say you're having a half a cup of L. ruteri, you're probably not getting any carbohydrates. You're getting a small, tiny bit of lactic acid in there, um, which is usually around 0.7 to 1%. Um, and then the rest, the proteins and the fats usually stay the same. So the calories drop though, because when you're looking for how to really do this, this is something I learned a long time ago. So I have made a graph in this article with this podcast to show you exactly how much calories fats, proteins, carbs, and lactic acids are in a half a cup of sale, ruteri, yogurt, or gas, which is what we usually recommend people eat. 
It's a general guideline for estimating the, nutri the nutritional content of these yogurts because the calorie count may vary depending on what type of milk you use, but also how long you fermented it for. Um, but this serves as a reliable baseline for calculating your nutritional intake. So I'll go over this, but you can also go to the article, which I'll put in the link in the description below, because all my podcasts usually have articles with them and vice versa. So if you have a half a cup of, of uh, half and half, let's say you used half and half to make your yogurt, the total calories will be 146. You'll get 14 grams of fat, four proteins, and one to zero carbohydrates, and 0.7 or 1% um, lactic acid. If you have whole milk that you made your yogurt with, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna have 56 calories, four grams of fat, four grams of protein, and one to zero carbohydrates, and then very minimal lactic acid. And the same will go for all of these um, yogurts for the lactic acid. So 2% milk, which, which is what I make most of my yogurt with, is 42.5 calories. 2.5 grams of fat and uh, one to zero carbohydrates. And also the lactic acid is very minimal, 0.7 or less. And then fat-free milk has 22 calories, 0.2 grams of fat, uh, less than one to zero grams of carbs, and then 0.7 or less lactic acid in it. So all of that together really significantly affects the calories and the carbohydrate counts, but it doesn't really affect the fats and the proteins. They remain the same. So people ask me this all the time, uh, and this is a general, you know, guideline on what you're getting. So if you're counting calories, this is a good way to do it. Um, and it also doesn't this doesn't necessarily apply to things like yogurt plus because they're only fermented for seven to eight hours so the calorie counts are going to be a little different and the carbs are going to be a little different they're going to be closer to three or four carbohydrates it's a little bit different just because it's not fermented as long so it's not quite as sour and tart as el ruder and algaceri something to know if something's if some yogurt that you're eating is very sour and very tart you've probably got all the lactose out of that milk. So you could probably take the carbohydrate count down to one to zero, and the calories will go down too. So all of that is going to significantly impact your calories if you're counting them. But just know what you're seeing on labels at the store on yogurts isn't always accurate. And then they add extra sugars into them, so then that kind of messes things up too. So. You can always look at the added sugars that they add because that's going, it's often added after fermentation. So that is not going to be reduced. So you could look at the added sugars and add that into the calorie or the calorie content and the carbohydrate count on content. So even if the yogurt is only three or four grams, you have to take into account the added sugars that were added after fermentation to sweeten it. So, and you know, one of, the, one of the things I always try to remember is that whatever yogurt I get, if I buy some from the store uh, for a quick snack or something, the more sour and tart it is, the more alive the bacteria is, and also the less lactose you're getting in the product. So and that's a good way to tell if your yogurt's good. If, they, if you have a yogurt that sits in your fridge and it doesn't ever get more tart, then the cultures are probably not active. So because mine will continue to get more and more sour over time. And that's a good sign to know that you've got a lot of probiotics in that product. But it's really fun to make your own. It's also going to give you a ton more probiotics because you don't know how long those things have been sitting on the store shelves. And um, so you're always going to get more if you make your own. Uh, and you can do that so easily. I just made, how many jars? I made, I made three jars of El Ruderine this morning. And I do it in my sous vide and I put it in quart jars. And it takes me five minutes. I just took some of the yogurt that I had made prior. I had some El Ruta in the fridge. And I'm always cautious because if I don't make it right away, everybody eats it. So I took out two tablespoons from a previous batch, mixed in two tablespoons of Prebio Plus, poured cold milk into it. I like 2%. I love A2 milk. If you haven't tried A2 milk, it's really good for yogurt. It works really, really well. So I used A2 2% milk 
poured it in the jar, stuck it in the sous vide with two other jars, and I'm letting it ferment for 36 hours. So um, it's so easy to do. It doesn't take very long. And then I have lots of yogurt for everybody to eat. So I've been making a lot of yogurts. We've been testing some new um, different strains that I am absolutely crazy in love with. So I'm excited to tell you about those coming up, but we're still working on uh, testing them and, and doing lots of things to ensure that it's an easy product to use. We love yogurts and it's something I use for dessert all the time. I will um, use it because sometimes I just want something and I'll get these little jars of yogurt that I've made, put some jam in it. And I have some of this kefir whip topping that I make and I just dollop it on top. And it's just basically cream that's whipped and I put a little kefir yogurt in it and it stabilizes it. And I have a yummy dessert. And I do that all the time because sometimes um, I want something, you know what I mean? But I don't want to make it and I don't want something that's not good for me. And uh, these yogurts have just become something I use all the time. Uh, as something I enjoy and also as dessert. So I also put lemon curd on them. I make a lemon curd. I have that on my website. And I also top it with lemon curd. Um, that's another fun thing to top or fresh fruit. But anyway, those are some of the things that I do um, that help give me lots of health benefits. But also, guys, it's really easy to make. It's really not as hard as you think. Um, and it just, and I just stick those quart jars in my fridge and label them. And because I have so many, I have so many jars of yogurt in my fridge right now because we're testing stuff. I've got coconut yogurt. I've got pumpkin seed yogurt. I've got uh, so many different strains that we're using and testing. I'm really excited about it because I do use a lot of yogurt because I like the protein in yogurt. Um, if you strain out the way, you get a very high protein yogurt, which um, I'm needing more protein as I get older to preserve muscle mass. It also keeps everything stable for me. So yogurt is a great way to do that. And these yogurts are great for that. So it is something I consume a lot in my diet. And so do the people that help me make these strains. One of the guys that helps um, at Cutting Edge Culture, who I love, Roy, he's lost so much weight eating all these fermented foods. He's gone from, he said, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but he was like 225. I think he's way down to his high school weight now. He's And he's doing so well. And he, he said he replaced so many foods with these fermented foods he doesn't have you know wine or alcohol after dinner now he has kefir soda because he loves it so much and yogurts and all these different things we're eating are really helping him because he eats a lot of protein too uh l ruterized helped him increase testosterone level for him as he's gotten older and it's made him feel healthier and um it's an exciting thing to see how these foods can change your life and they've changed mine dramatically i mean I see quite a bit of difference from eating them and I switch them around. I do different things all the time because, you know, we have a fermented food kitchen over here that we're constantly doing. And it's really funny because my son came home from work yesterday. He's a mechanic. And he said that the guys at work say he's a complete, uh, they, they complete, he's controversial to them because he's a walking controversial statement because he's kind of like, he's, He's got a lot of trucks. He's kind of burly. He's got a beard and he's, you know, he, he, of course, he's really a sweet guy, but he looks tough. And he says, and then he goes, and then you guys, this is what the guys at work say about him. The, then you're eating foods like these fermented foods on your counter, which we don't know if that's okay. And you don't drink sodas and you don't eat seed oils. And it, it's like you're a hippie because you're like two of these different things. You're, you're completely controversial to in, in every way and he goes we just don't understand it but a lot of it is because yeah uh, of all the things that he's learned growing up and the things I do and he's a big guinea pig for me he's always trying my foods and uh drinking the sodas and all the different things um that I make and he really enjoys them and he really does try to uh incorporate these into his diet because he doesn't do good if he doesn't so that's the wonderful thing about these foods and my own family is that I'm telling you guys, what you eat is everything. It's It determines how you're going to feel. And I didn't have to teach them so much. They learned it themselves by consuming foods that weren't good for them and feeling horrible. And then consuming these foods and other healthy foods that made them feel great. And they had energy and they felt better. And that's really 
the benefit of these foods. I don't really have to convince anybody. These foods speak for themselves. And the better you eat, the better you feel. And the more energy you have and the more joy you have in your life. Because these foods also affect your mood. Fermented foods are great for increasing um, your happiness factor, I think. And because that gut affects how your brain works too. Um, the, the gut is the second brain. So these are just some of the fun things that I've been doing. I like to help you because I get a lot of emails about calories and things. So I finally decided to write a blog and article. So you can have it right there and you can look at it. So just trying to make it easier for you to incorporate these into your life. And especially if you're worried about calories and carbs and things like that. Um, this should make it easier for you. So go to the article and you can see the graph and everything. It'll lay it all out for you there. And I hope this helps. And I hope we'll encourage you to eat these fabulous, healing, life-giving yogurts um, that have made such a difference for me. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week.